Hi, everybody. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, sometimes I'm not sure if today or this is the right moment for me to to do a message to you. Um, I think like many of you, I'm caught in the madness of what's happening and in the chaos. And I think like many of you, I can feel the anger and the rage of everything getting into my system. And I felt it particularly yesterday when I witnessed what happened at St. John's Church. This was the Church of Lincoln. This is where he prayed every night during the Civil War. He would walk across from the White House and he would go into that church and pray and to witness what happened yesterday, the priest, Marianne Bube, Bube, Butter, excuse me, Butter, um, getting gassed <clears throat> while she was trying to be there in a peaceful way, supportive of the wounds that people are trying to process and heal. Um, she said, now she'll become a force to reckon with. I love that. The Bishop of Washington is infuriated as a result. And then to see President Trump use that platform, violate that platform. But this is, this is not about politics. It truly is not political political issues are really not if we if we exploited and explored political issues we end up in the wrong place I, when i go there i become saturated with even more rage because that's the place of contamination for me the way i have to deal with this and I don't know if this will help you out at all, is I have to pull myself out and get to a place of a larger scope, of, a, of, of symbolically looking at how did we get here and what is the meaning of what is going on now? What is the greater scope? Because without that, just like if I were trying to help you out of an illness, if all you told me about was the issue that you were screaming about with your family today, I couldn't help you. I, I could not help you out of that. I would have to get a much larger perspective of how did this anger, where did it come from? What, what give me the larger perspective or I can't get you out of this argument. I had to, I had to get a larger perspective that helps me understand how did we end up with these people in office? How did we end up with this situation? And when I was thinking about that, it was very hard for me to sleep last night. What occurred to me, several things. One, is for some reason I thought about how World War I started with the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand. I know you're probably thinking, oh, where am I going? But I think as a historian so often, and Europe was a raging point. I mean, people, this is what psychic free radicals do in us. We, we don't realize the power of our thoughts. We just don't realize them. And they collect in the psychic atmosphere and they form like, psychic clouds of power and they eventually have to explode into events and they are triggered by an event like a match they are like nature nature operates on the law of balance and it takes that one event that one event that triggers an explosion and that one assassination of this meaningless archduke and his wife who were pawns of power in Europe in 1914. They, 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 were, they were nothing. It wasn't like the, the King of England was assassinated 
or someone who really meant something, but it was enough. It was the straw on the camel's back that all it was needed. George Floyd was the straw on a camel that was filled, that was carrying a load of, of one injustice and one lie after another that has tipped the balance of what our collective soul can endure. That is what I think. I think that we have been living in a psychic, spiritual field that has become so contaminated with lies, untruths, um, distortions of reality, um, that w and you can feel it. You know, your soul is an instrument of truth, of truth. You have a metronome in you that, that, that is your guiding post that says, this is right, this is wrong, this is truth, this is a lie. This, you're, you're designed that way. That's how your soul is designed. I mean, this evening in my class, I'm going to go through the laws, the natural laws, the laws that govern you, the law of balance, the, 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 the laws of truth that, that, you, that are meant to keep you healthy, that are meant to be your guide. I mean, the, and the law of nature is the law of balance. We don't arrive at this place where we are so imbalanced overnight, not the collective. It is a, it's, it's a process of accumulation, decades of accumulating collective choices that throw the environment off balance, that throw the collective populace off balance, of making political choices, social choices, um, <clears throat> community choices, personal choices that are constantly leaning against the law of nature, the law of nature in us, the law of nature in nature itself, the law of nature in the ecology, the law of nature politically, the law, um, and I mean in the, the, the politics of the whole, what is good for the whole. Um, a few weeks ago, the president sat in front of Lincoln the man who emancipated freedom for human beings to establish balance in humanity, trying to navigate this nation out of a civil war. Paradoxically, we are now being navigated into a civil war by the man sitting in front of Lincoln yet again. And we can feel this is not right. But we're being directed, American against American, people against our own citizens, against each other. There's something wrong about that. These are our citizen brothers and sisters. This is not right. These are our fellow countrymen. <clears throat> this is not right. A house divided amongst itself cannot stand. These are our fellow countrymen. There's something not okay in this. This is against the fundamentals of who we are. No, this is not right. For all the decades that we have been nurturing consciousness in us, nurturing the power of love, nurturing the power of what makes us healthy, what makes you healthy, what you need to be healthy. The fears and hostilities that are rising so easily, so easily, where's that been hiding? Where's that coming from? Where's that been hiding? Somehow a collective amount of fear has been generated and obviously we've been buying into it a culture of lies they're coming to get us they're going to be coming across the border they're coming to get us who's coming to get 
we're coming to get ourselves. This is like being under a bad spell, like being under a very bad spell. And it's up to every single person to get out from under a very bad spell. We're living in a society where telling the truth, we have to have a new archetype for it. It's called a whistleblower. And when you're a whistleblower now, you're arrested, you're shamed, you're fired from your job for telling the truth. Since when is truth the worst thing you can do? When in fact, telling the truth is the best thing for your health, for your well-being, for your conscience. Since when is lying your protection? Christ said, Satan is the father of all lies. I want you to just think about that. That lying is the great contaminant. Lying. If you want to be a contributor to how to change things, don't fall for lies. Break through that darkness. Break through that darkness. People are not different because they're a different color. These are all human beings are human beings. Go for the highest creed that this is a universe created by one divine being, one divine being, that we are all connected on the internet, that, that all human beings want the same thing that you do, love, a home, family, that, that, that no human being should be denied that, that right, that what these battles of power are all about at the end of the day is the fear that if I, if I give you more power, I'll have less. That I have to repress your power so that you don't get my power. That somehow or other, if, if <clears throat> you get a better education, you'll be smarter than me, but then I'll have to even try harder to be smarter than you. And that might be a problem. So it's better that I just keep you dumber so I don't have to try as hard. That's what this has always been about. That what, what if you become smarter than me and then, geez, I'll have, to, I'll have to try even harder to be smarter than you. Instead of recognizing that your intelligence is gonna benefit the whole of everything. We're all in this together. Life is about all life benefiting all life. That is the only way this ends is for everyone to finally get through their fear of everyone and to get through the lies being perpetrated and to actually see through the liars. This is not going to be a simple journey. Something tells me it's a true turning point, a true turning point in this journey of transformation. And it is, and because of that, it's really going to take courage. It's, it's really going to take courage. I, I heard someone say, more than one person say, why don't they just stop that looting? Okay, so there are the marauders that are going to take advantage of this. There always are. But it's not the peaceful protesters. There's always going to be the fringe. There, there, there's always that. There's those people that always take advantage of this and whatever. Keep your eye on the transformation. Keep your eye on the transformation. Just like in the revolution, in the American Revolution, all revolutions and all transformations, there's always the fringe that try to make the money off of it, that try to take advantage of it. There's always that dark element. Keep your eye on the light. Keep your eye on the main river. Don't be distracted with the tributaries. Don't. Keep your eye on the river and be part of the river of light. Stay on the river of light. 
and, and stay in prayer if you ever needed the grace of prayer. When I look at what happened to Mr. Floyd, I see it symbolically as well as what actually happened. But there was this police officer choking his fifth chakra, the chakra of expression, the chakra of will, saying, I won't give you the will. I won't. Choking the will of, of all African Americans, choking the will of, of, of powerless people. It was a symbolic death as well as a literal one. And there was a man on the side saying, hey, bro, let him breathe, begging for the grace of mercy. Please grant him mercy. What does it mean when mercy is denied? When the grace of mercy is denied to a human being? That's what you witnessed. That's what you witnessed. What the grace of mercy, the denial of mercy looks like. And when the absence of mercy is witnessed in our society, we've hit bottom. We've hit bottom. When, you, when people are begging for mercy and there is none. And that's when you know okay, it is time to pray, and you better damn well start when you actually see people beg for mercy and it's denied. And that's when you know it's our turn to start praying. So, I leave you with this. It's time for all of us to pray for all of us, to pray within, to realize when you pray, you pray as though you are living in the whole of creation and that every, every thought, I'll, I'll leave you with this one. <clears throat> I listened to a priest talk about how he became a priest because he had a near-death experience. He was engaged at the time, but he had this near-death experience and the end result was he saw this light and then heaven began to communicate with him and he became a priest. But in the process of that, he had a near-death experience and he had a life review. And in the life review, he actually saw an incident when he was a child, just like six or seven years old, and he took something, he stole something from a, a store something that he thought was just insignificant. It was like worth 10 cents or something because it was way back when. But he was shown the consequences of that, the consequences. He saw that somehow that the man who owned the store saw that. And it affected him because it was the straw on the camel's back. And the man apparently had... <coughs> had so many incidences of this petty theft of kids that that was the one that caused him to lose faith in the goodness of children, the innocence of children. So he saw that, and he saw that as a result of that, it broke the man's heart. So it wasn't just this little thing. He saw the tributary of that, and it crushed him. Because you can look at one thing, but likewise, he then saw the effect of one act, tiny act, that he never thought of again, of kindness with someone, and how that, in turn, gave that person so much hope. And then that person rebounded in life, and all the good that person did with the rest of his life. Because in that moment, he rebounded. He never thought about that man again. You think now about all the good you can do. This is no time to ever again think about yourself as helpless. When you look in this moment of chaos, you start empowering yourself in the smallest degree that every act of kindness 
every act of goodness now matters more than you ever thought it ever mattered before. You turn yourself into an active agent of change because now, now it matters. You matter more because you're alive now and it's a privilege to be alive now. It's a privilege to be part of this history of transformation. It's no accident you're alive now. I don't care what your age is. I don't care if you've got one foot in the grave, the other one isn't. You, you become an active angel of change. And you, and a channel of grace so that when someone asks for mercy, you are right there, ready to pray it through. Okay. Bless you. Thank you.